Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Um, in the uh, re most recent Aptera update, there was a segment in there about uh, Aptera's production intent battery module. And so it looks like this, there's been many iterations of the production intent battery module um, over the last several months. And I think this is probably their final, final design. And I'll tell you why I think that. Um, but there was a little segment about it. So let's watch it and then let's talk about it. Hello Aptera fans, I'm Tim Vaughn. Nice to meet you. I'm responsible for battery development here at Aptera Motors. This is the first time we're showing... Okay, so before we go any further, this is Tim Vaughn. He's, if you look at him on LinkedIn, he's Director of Engineering at FlexPower. FlexPower, as many of you guys know, is a company that Chris Anthony started and uh, Steve Amro worked there as well. Um, they make um, battery packs, mostly for forklifts and other industrial things, replacing lead acid batteries. Um, he's still listed as director of engineering 2019 to the present he, before he was product manager. So he's been at flex power for almost 10 years. I don't know if he is just moonlighting over at Aptera and helping them out, or if he's switching jobs from flex power to Aptera, not sure what's going on there, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a very easy connection between flex power and Aptera due to Steve and Chris both having worked at flux power previously it was one of their previous companies um if you look at flux power they are a fairly established company at this point they provide um battery packs and they mostly i think they almost predominantly work with lithium iron phosphate and i know that a lot of people are wanting aptera to go to lithium iron phosphate lithium iron phosphate is a safer um battery chemistry it's just a little less volumetric and um, uh, it, it's just less energy dense, um, both by weight and by volume. But like Delta's ground crews at Salt Lake City are evidently using Flux Power's batteries and uh, things like that. But anyways, um, so that's Tim Vaughn. He is, oh, no, so I'm over here. Uh, this is Tim Vaughn. He's showing us the new Aptera battery pack. And if you look at this carefully, you can tell that this is not a completed pack the spot welds have not been done. So the, the, the battery tabs have not been welded on. They're just kind of free floating in the air you see here. And so this is a, not a completed battery pack. It looks like a battery pack with the cells in place and the bus bar or the collector plates placed on there, but they have not been welded in place. Showing you our new production module that will go into the production vehicles. Currently we have modules being welded at a local partner and they're destined to go. Okay, so you see them welding it. Now, I wonder if their local partner is Flux Power. That, that you know, I don't know if the uh, equipment that Flux Power using is for manufacturing their battery packs is using a spot welder like this, or if they use pouches, because a lot of lithium iron phosphate is in pouches, not in cells. But um, my guess is that they're, that Flux Power is doing this that's their local partner flux power is in vista california tim vaughn works at flux power he's director of engineering uh there and so that it, it would make sense go into the first vehicles while most of these modules are being placed into vehicles some are being pulled off for a variety of testing this one for example will be going through an exhaustive vibration and shock test this testing is to represent the vibration and shock that the Aptera vehicle will experience during its lifetime. And thanks to your continued support, all of us at Aptera are thrilled to see these modules finally coming into fruition. It's exciting to see so many. Okay, so I'm not sure. One of the things I'm not sure about is why are they doing this locally? You know, there, we were under the impression that CTNS was gonna be building the battery packs. And uh, Chris McCann came on our Discord channel and kind of clarified for us that basically CTNS is building out the factory and how to mass produce these things. Um, and CTNS will eventually build the battery packs in that assembly line that they're working on. Um, so CTNS is making the machine to make the machine. And Aptera is making these. So this is the production intent battery pack and now they're testing it. Um, you know, this is something I think we all wish would have happened like months ago, um, but they're here now. And if you look at 
So this is a picture of Aptera's battery pack. This is from um, Drive the Lightning's channel. This is a short from them. And you can see here that the, the collector plates um, are this, this one strip of wire here. And you see these tabs um, placed across here uh, weld and spot welded in place. Now this looks very similar to this. And this is Lucid's battery pack. And um, if you ever get a chance, you, sh you should really watch this um, a battery pack tech talk from Lucid Motors. It's Peter Rawlinson goes over their battery pack design. It's really good. And their battery pack design is very, very similar to Aptera's battery pack design. They use end plate cooling, just like Aptera's battery plate is doing. And um, they have a very energy dense, well um, designed battery pack module. And Peter Rawlinson does a great job of describing it. But if you look at their collector, so here's their collector bar right here. And then you see them, um, you see that the little tab, this is the positive and this is the negative. So the negative part of the cell is at the bottom is on the other end, but the negative reaches all the way to the top end on the side here. So this circle right here is positive and this bigger circle all around here is negative. So you see the negative tab is here. See all the negatives are attached to this bus bar on this side and then it's to the positives on here. So these, this group of cells is all the positives are hooked up to this collector plate and this group of cells, the negatives are collected to this plate. So this, it's in series between here and here and all of these are in parallel. But you see the same design where they're using these little strips of wire to, to weld it to the bus bar. And that's what you see in uh, this battery pack that was um, from about seven or eight months ago, um, which was thought to be the, the PI pack, but this is clearly not the PI pack. If you look at the new pack, um, it's a different design. And then on X, they released a picture of the battery pack after all the spot welding has been done. So you see here again, this right here is the negative and then this is the positive. So this group of two, these, this group of two cells are hooked up in uh, parallel and then they're hooked up in series to this group of two cells. And then you see the, the negative goes over to this side. So it's in, it's in like this group of two is in series with this group of two rows and then this group of two and it just goes on down the pack. And then these hooked up are in parallel. But you see how this design is much more elegant than Lucid's design. And Lucid's design I thought was awesome. They like did a great job. But manufacturing this, um, you would have to have the robot place each of these little strips and then weld twice. You have to weld it here and weld it here. So it's double the amount of welding. Uh, on the Aptera plate, it's just one weld. See, you don't have to weld it to the bus bar because the bus bar is designed with this already in place and you just tack it down and weld it here, weld here, weld here. So it's just one weld. So twice the welds in the Lucid pack and you have to position the bus, uh, the wire. So I think that is a pretty, this is a very elegant design and very clean and looks like it's gonna be very easy to manufacture. Now, if you look at Tesla's battery pack their newest battery pack, the 4680 battery pack, um, they're doing uh, the same thing. You see their bus bar is built in and, and put into the shape. And you see here, here's the positive and here's the negative. So this one, this, so, and there's this like kind of in this like staggered design. So this negative is in parallel with this negative, is in parallel with this negative, is in parallel with this negative. And then on this side, it's it's to the positive, positive, positive. So these are hooked up. Looks like, uh, yeah, th these two are hooked up in parallel. And then they're put into series with, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the, the parallel goes this way and the series goes this way. And, but, and again, you see that they are, uh, it just requires a single weld per position. And you don't have to, 
position each little um, strip of wire and tack them on twice. So basically Aptera is using the same design that the newest Tesla battery pack is using, which is this bus bar that I think is much more elegant. Um, and if you look at it, there's a lot of um, kind of wire path in this design. Whereas if you look at Aptera's design, the, the, the path to each um, tap is very short. So I think that's, that's also um, a sign of really good, elegant design. This path is really short. So see, see how like this go, the length is maybe like a few millimeters. And then this length is a few millimeters. If you look at Aptera's, like this line is quite long. And then, you know, this one goes quite long. Now they do have a just fatter battery pack. The, you know, the 4680 um, cells are much fatter. So you, you're going to have to deal with some of the, uh, the diameter issues to make this path longer. But um, overall, this design looks great. And so I think this is the design we're looking at. I'm, I'm personally very happy with, that, with the design. I'm obviously not an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer or an automotive engineer, so I don't know. But just looking at comparing it to different battery packs. And remember, I, I think that Lucid's engineering is amazing, but they clearly could have done a better job with designing this piece. And um, if you look at um, Monroe Live's uh, uh, basically teardown of the Lucid pack, you can see it is indeed still the way they're doing it they're just having they're having to weld here and here so two welds per position instead of one weld per position and this was tesla's old design as well tesla's old battery packs um, are using this design if you look at their 2170 packs or their um their previous pack before the 4680 packs and so this is their new battery pack it appears that CTNS is just building the assembly line and not the actual battery packs yet. And they're kind of, Aptera is trying to leapfrog them by having a partner do this now. And I believe that partner is probably Flux Power. I'm not 100% sure, but that's probably what it is. And um, they're gonna get this thing tested. Looks like they're testing these battery packs for like vibration and stability while they're waiting for these things. Hopefully this, this is gonna happen fast. But you know, honestly, the way that things are going, remember, Aptera was supposed to have a PI build early this year. Well, early this year has already passed. And I, I, I kind of think it's going to be late uh, 2025 before we see a uh, customer delivery of the Aptera rather than early 2025 or even mid 2025. I think it's going to be late. Uh, tell me what you guys think of the design. I think this is quite elegant and um, very easy to, it's much easier to manufacture. And I really like how they have these little plastic tabs on here. It makes setting down these bus bars and lining, aligning them very, very easy. Um, so I think the whoever designed this, I, I give it a big thumbs up. I think they did a great job. Um, all right, well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, have a great day.